At this point in the playlist, I would like to consider the conventions that are usually adopted when writing programs in Python. And we're going to look at how we name variables. Now, if we have a look at a particular program we've already seen, we can see here that we have a program that will calculate gross pay. And if we have a look at this variable here, you can see it says hourly pay rate. And if we take a closer look at it here, you can see that we have used, or I have used in the writing of the program, these underscores. Now, this is common practice in the writing of Python programs, as you will have seen when I was discussing this program earlier in a video in the playlist. Of course, we don't have to use this approach. We can name our variables using different recommendations. For example, we could do this. This is called camel casing. Here you can see we've got the word hourly, the word pay, and the word rate, and there is no underscore between them. But if you have a look at the word pay, you can see it starts with a capital P, and rate starts with a capital R. Now that's one way in which variables are often written by computer programmers. We can also do this, we can write hourly pay rate. Now here, there's been no capitalization of any of the new words that appear in the actual variable name. Or we can use HPR as an abbreviation, H for obviously hourly, P for pay, and R for rate. If we consider these now in turn, we've got hourly pay rate, and as I've already said, this is camel case and is often used. This one here is best avoided because it can be too difficult to read. It's clear with the camel casing where the new word starts because you capitalize the first letter of the new word. This one here, HPR, never use this. Never use abbreviations in your program code. There's a number of reasons for this, but quite simply, if you come back to your old program in a couple of days, you'll forget what HPR actually means. Of course, there are some programs which are very mathematically based, where you can use kind of shortcuts and abbreviations for maths symbols, but don't use it in general. It's best avoided. It's not a good idea. And also, when somebody else reads your code, they're not going to know what it's about. Well, if you look at this program, it doesn't take much imagination to realize this is something to do with people being paid, does it? Because look, we're using hourly pay rate, hours worked, and so on. So when you choose the names of variables, they have done so for a reason. It's to make your program easier to understand. So let's have a look at a recommendation. The recommendation is to use the underscore because that's what most people who write Python programs will do. They'll use the underscore. So here we can see we have hourly pay rate. And we can see we have put the underscore there. And there's no capitalization here. You can see it is all lowercase. Here you can see I've used hours worked and there's an underscore between the hours and the work and here there's an underscore between the gross and the pay. So you can see in the program I've produced I have followed my own recommendation here and used hourly pay rate. Now I write in other languages and I don't use the underscore in other languages. I'll not discuss what they are at this point because we're only really interested in Python. But needless to say, the underscore is the usual approach for Python programmers. Now I would like to emphasize this is for naming of variables. There are other naming conventions when we decide what we're going to do when we name our functions, which we'll discuss later in the playlist. The other thing we need to consider is there are common mistakes when we name variables. For example, here you can see I've wrote hourly pay rate and there's a space between each of the words. Now that's not allowed in this programming language and many others. In fact, all others, you can't put a space in. So spaces are not allowed. If you do it, you get what's called the syntax error. And we'll look at examples of that a little bit later. So spaces are not allowed. Other common mistakes are shown here. You cannot start a variable name with a number. So it might seem sensible. You, you've got a number coming into your program. It's the first number coming into your program. So you give it the name first number. So you can see I've given it first underscore number. But it started with a number. That's not allowed. Here, this one here, however, where it's number underscore one, well, that's okay. You can use that. There's a number in the variable name. We're not saying you cannot use numbers. It just cannot be the first character of your variable name. Other things we need to concern ourselves with are keywords. 
these cannot be used for variables names and here you can see i've got and del from not while as return and def now these are words that are used by python and for example we'll see later is a logical operator if we look at the last one def that's an abbreviation for definition but we use the word def when we write our code and that has a particular purpose in the language so we cannot use it let's have a look at a snippet of a piece of code that will give us problems here you can see i've said let else equal one and then print else now in its own right it doesn't make any sense anyhow but else is a keyword or if you like a reserved word with the python language and if i attempted to run this program this is what would happen we'd get this appearing and it would tell us we had invalid syntax and what you would normally do as a programmer now you'd click on the ok button and you would get this happening and you can see that the python environment even the simple one that i'm using for the demonstration of code for these video lessons here it at least highlights the problem you see it's highlighting else and that will remind you when you have experience oh i've used the keyword and you shouldn't uh, use keywords so this video has simply been a quick run through of the ways in which you should name your variables give them names that mean something you cannot use keywords you cannot start them with a figure there are other symbols you cannot start with as well but we'll talk about those as and when necessary when we're moving through the the playlist and you cannot put spaces but the other thing is don't abbreviate your variable names they'll mean something to you when you're writing your code they won't mean anything to you when you come back to look at your own code and if everybody did this every time you looked at somebody else's code you would wonder what these abbreviations meant course what a lot of people will do they'll put the abbreviation and they'll write alongside in the comments what the abbreviation stands for that's just a waste of typing if you set off right at the very beginning with a sensible name you don't have to add the comment to tell everybody what the abbreviation means so just be careful choose sensible names and make sure that they are valid syntax names and another word for a variable name by the way is identifier that's the formal way you know we've really been talking here not about variable names but variable identifiers which is a name by any other description anyhow check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the youtube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time i upload a new video on python